What's up guys, welcome to the first video of the Theme Park Tycoon 2 tutorial series. My name is Connor and let's jump right into this. So welcome to the first video of the Theme Park Tycoon 2 tutorial series. The first video here is going to be covering just the basics, mostly the GUIs, of Theme Park Tycoon 2. As you can see in front of me here, I have the load screen, so I'm going to start right here. As you can see, we have two buttons to press from. You have the start new game, which will start a new game for you, and then your load game. For me, I'm just going to click the load game, and then you can select the park that you have. Right here is the change log, and it just shows some of the changes that the creator has made to the game. So if we exit out of this, we can get into the game itself. First, starting off in the front here, we have some things to choose from. You have the park information, which will just tell you some basic things about your park, such as its name, the person who owns it, if it's open or closed, how much it costs to get in, the type of entrance, so you can choose from having the default or no entrance, and then just a couple stats, which is how much your park is worth and how many stars you have. Next, if we click right here, this is who's liked your park in the past. So next, let's move down to the bottom bar over here. Let's start on the far left with the shop. This is generally everything you can buy with Robux in the game, including game passes and in-game money. So now we move down to the main toolbar here. There's eight buttons, each one corresponding with a button on your keyboard. So if we start off with number one here, this is the rides. You have all the rides to choose from, and up here you have your subsections. So for instance, you have your gentle rides, intense rides, coasters, water rides, and transport rides, each one in their own selective groups. Above this, you have a little separate GUI up here. That's just some basic controls, such as the color of the ride, having it go up and down, and then the rotation of it. As well, rides themselves have a GUI that go with them. If we open it up here, you can see there's more sub-tabs. Let's start with the ride, which has some pretty cool and new features added onto it. Up top, you can see the name of the ride, you can see what's its status, and you can see how much it costs. All of these, you are able to change yourself. Down below it, you're able to build the entrance and exit. And then below that is a new feature that the creator added, which is music audio. Not everyone has access to this because you need the audio game pass. And that's simply bought down in the shop that I showed you earlier. Warning, I say simply a lot, so just get used to it. Next, we have the color of the ride, which lets you just select the color. That's pretty basic. Thoughts basically just say what people within your park are thinking of this ride. Lastly, you have some stats here that just let you see the all-time guest count and then the ratings of the ride and its statistics. Now, coasters are pretty similar, but they have a couple more features that are added to them. As you can see, there's a fifth tab up here that says Operations, and this is accessible if you have the Operations Game Path. If we go back to the Ride button, you can see most of the stuff is pretty the same, except we have a new section right here, which is the ride track. These two buttons just let you select where you want to edit the track from, either where you clicked on the ride or just from the very end of it. Next, we move over to number two, which is the stalls. These are purely just for making money within your park. There's nothing much else to each one of these. Once again, you can see we have our sub tab up here, which lets you access different types of stalls. As well, stalls have their own unique GUIs that go with them, including the price, color, once again the lame thoughts, and the stats. Thoughts aren't like that pointless because you can see if people think that your ride or place is too expensive or it takes too long or I still never have clicked on it and actually used it like to its intended purpose. Therefore, I think it's pretty pointless. So next up we have the decorations tab or scenery tab, which should be used a lot within the game because you need a lot of scenery to make your park look nice. And like the others, there are the sub tabs up top, which let you access different things within this general tab of scenery. Moving to the right again, we come to number four, which is the paths. 
Paths are important to let your guests travel around your park. Queue paths are another important feature in the game because this is what lets you line people up to go to a certain ride. Next we have terrain, and this lets you play around with how you move the ground around. The first tab you're able to pull up certain corners, edges, or just the whole ground itself to make some cool looking designs. In paint terrain, you're able to change the type of terrain that you're using, such as if you want to use rock, sand, granite, or whatever else you have access to. Block manipulation, you can see, looks the, generally the same, except for a new part that we have, which is called air, which lets you just remove things that are already in place. As well, using block manipulation, you can just add in certain blocks where they need to be. And then lastly, we come to water, which you can place it in and then remove it later. After terrain, we move on to a couple more basic tools, such as the picker, which lets you just select something you've already placed. The paint tool allows you to paint different things different colors. Lastly, you have the most basic button, which is the delete button. So now we move on to these three buttons over in the far right. You can see we have a save game button, which just lets you simply save the game. And then we have an achievements tab. This is all the achievements that you're able to unlock within the game. Each achievement opens up a new path that lets you build different things within your park, such as this nice theme park that lets you open up the multi-launch coaster and the phase turbine coaster. Coming to the last button we have is settings. Now this one's pretty complicated. There's a lot to see here, so let's go over it pretty slowly. To start at the top here, we have guest update and ride update. Each one of these controls how much each one moves within the distance of your camera. By having a higher update, the things will move a lot quicker and smoothly within the background, but also increase lag within your computer. Down beneath that, we have some check marks as you can see here, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory. A new feature though that was added is this draw distance. This is how far away things will be that are moving, such as the guests and ride, that your camera will be able to pick up. By having it at a lower setting, you have a better performance as you can see here, and makes your computer run quicker. By having it at unlimited, this makes it a little bit slower, but you can see everything within your park. Underneath that, we have the park info, which you had already seen at the beginning of the tutorial. Beneath that, you have park expansion, which lets you buy different parts of the land so that you can have a bigger plot. Moving on, we have some statistics. The first two you already saw, again, in the beginning of the video when we covered the park info. But underneath that, you have a couple more things such as the playtime and how many guests have visited your park in total. After that, we visit the co-builders. This allows you to let other people build within your park. And so far, there's no one else on the server, so I only have myself on this list. But if there are other people, then you'd be able to simply click their name and they'd be added onto your park and be able to build. People who can build on your park are able to use your money. They don't use their own money from their park, they use your money within your park. So that's something to keep in mind if you don't want people screwing up how much money you have. After that, we have the delete everything button. For this, you must have $100,000 within your park to delete everything. And even once you click on it, there are some pretty firm things that let you know that you are going to delete your park. So first, there's a warning that says, you can't undo this. If I click confirm, it'll say that you need to enter these two things here. So if I enter my username and I enter this text exactly, then we can move on to the final step. When we click continue, we get one more warning just in case. Moving on to the last couple of tabs, we have Unload Park, and this will basically delete everything you have in your park so that you can reload a new park. Make sure you save your game before this though, because if you don't, like it says here, everything that's not saved will be lost. Lastly, we come to the hotkeys here, which just let you change some of the things you use on your keyboard to make the gaming experience a little bit quicker. Under that, we have the change log that you got to see at the beginning when you load in your screen. So that's all I got for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like the video, hit that like button. And if you guys want to see more of this tutorial series, hit the subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with a lot more on this series and just a couple more videos in general. I hope you guys enjoyed, learned something new hopefully, or just refreshed your memory. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!
Just kidding, I'm not Markiplier.